I have forever been on the journey of discovery, taking risks and burning my purpose. Now take this lantern house, which we and a group of wild, yet more or less rational artists, designed with 2.2 million from the lottery funding. The topic now day was the 1st of May. I have a mug here that was produced for the building. At least we thought it was produced for the building. We had a hundred of them, and by the time I got around to the speech, there were three left, and all the rest of them nicked. <laughs> the talking out day was May Day, Friday the 1st of May, 1998. It's empty so far, actually, John. Little, little. as I hope you discovered, for originating participatory and celebratory art for the community. And I am really sad that it's closing. Yet despite the unique and wonderful gift of Lantern House, on April Fool's Day 2006, we walked away from it. We then started, at sooner, dead good guides to explore another age, an age of ecology and climate change, seeking a way of living creatively and sustainably from a wooden ark on the stilts on the west shore of Morgan Bay. We've always been driven by vision, seeking to make ideas concrete and loving the process of spontaneous invention and collaborative exchange, inventing original prototypes like site specific theatre, lantern parade installations, and new ceremonies for rites of passage. The last one is a big one. We're doing a lot more of it, but I'll come back to that later. I'm not even sure about the letters. In this age of twittering blogs, will anybody really read an old-fashioned letter? Well, dear reader, I am a pathological optimist, and when we turned with our circus tents and our caravans, we wrote those words in shiny letters on our big truck, just in case we forgot. Yes, I am a pathologist. <laughs> so here goes. You are in what used to be Boston's old national school. If you've been in the top room, you might have seen the coloured chalks lodged on the beams. Anybody notice that? Well, they were left there by ghosts of children past. So I'm imagining, artist, you're 12 years old. I know some excellent 12 year old creative spirits. Before you get trapped on the educational career ladder of fear, most of you young people as you well know, create wonderful, playful work from imaginative dreaming with open eyes. We need more of it. Patchen wrote his first book when he was 12. Quote, to raise a fortuitous sting on the boulevards of truth and beauty. Well, my young artist, you may be 12. You may be 12 now. But in 18 years' time, when you are 30, you well out of art college, if you need to go, and if such colleges still exist. When you are on the boulevards of truth and beauty, my young visionary, you will unfortunately encounter the perfect storm. We thought we had problems in the 60s, apartheid, Vietnam, homophobia, and so on. But we had some surplus. I could get a job supply teaching, and we weren't caught in the university fees mortgage trap. Clever control device. That's one. And there weren't a million young people out of work waiting, not yet complaining, or campaigning, or yet contemplating rioting. Docile, thatchers, children, I suppose. In 2030, when the perfect storm, that is lack of water, population growth, food shortages, and some climate change hits, how will you cope? There is not much political theatre around just now, probably because it has become institutionalised into university jargon degrees in applied or immersive drama. On the Standing Conference of University Drama Departments, did anybody look at that? Standing Conference of University Drama Departments. Skirt. I'm threatened to be skirt marks. <laughs> there is currently a huge question. Do you spell the word theatre making with a hyphen or not? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure.
sure, since Grotowski said, the actor is himself. Has there been such a furore in the sheltered corridors of academia? <laughs> Seriously, street artists claiming public space will be an increasingly important public act. I digress. Back to my monumental letter. I hope, my young artist, you will have some political maps. You will need the skills of awareness, lateral thinking, organisational ability, and hands on skills using old fashioned tools to build shelters, to keep fists, and to grow food and eat it. When you're a bit older, you could do worse than check out the work in climate camps or UK Uncuts. Check out Platform 2. Their work on oil companies, some of whom inevitably funded what we still call the arts, is revelatory. Study or join the transition town, the tipping point, or dark mountain movements. Not so much as have. But do be wary of talking too much. The future needs actions from creative people with brains in their fingers. And you may find you will need to trade your skills with people who hate art, or who have no idea what it is. We were talking about this in dinner about sorting, trading our work directly with whatever we might need. In another decade, Say when you are 21, I hope that some things will have improved. I reckon that just now we are on the cusp of a really big change. Now it is possible that self-appointed intellectuals like me have always said this, but I think we are. Over the last couple of decades, despite this to the contrary, funding for the arts has increased, thanks in fact to a number of unsung bureaucrats like the maligned Peter Hewitt. And thank goodness street arts is no longer quite the forgotten Cinderella. Yet, despite good intentions, the natural, inevitable processes of habit and entropy have invaded the arts world, which is now bureaucratised and institutionalised. Have you filled in one of those social engineered electronic rap track online grants for the arts forms recently? <laughs> there are so many office people on good permanent PAY salaries and pensions with a vested interest in running the top down China shops from generating tick box forms and assessment criteria, that they are naturally reluctant to invite in the bulls. But we bulls, we artists, young and old, need to rattle those China cake stands a great deal more. Let's have a intercourse with an elegant. <laughs> well, actually John Mossel's normally the fixer. <laughs> well, that that is. You've probably got an elegant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, well, despite my request, there are no on the list Anyway, it is the artist's duty to be alive, to drag people into glittering occupations, to bless perpetually in gaping innocence, to drift happily through the ruined race intelligence, to burrow beneath the subconscious, to defend the unreal at the cost of his reason, to abase each outrageous impulse, and to commit his company to all enchantments. In committing to enchantments, and this is my letter again, artists shift perception and demonstrate imaginative possibilities. Unfortunately, like so much else in our market-driven culture, art has been hijacked as money, celebrity, novelty, history, and spectacle. It has been turned from a process into a product. The spectator has come about over the last 200 years as a result of urbanization, imperialism, electronic technology, the media, and the all-pervading market economy, which generates false needs for passive consumers, constipated with too much choice, and alienated into political apathy. Shall I say all this again? <laughs> <laughs> this is a rant that will get slightly worse. <laughs> we may well be on the brink of a financial and ecological collapse, and starting to realize that the past 200 years of industrial development has been a doubtful lesson. But however much the market may fail, as it probably will, we must not tolerate failure of the imagination. We must not lose poetry, stories, play, music, and the envelope of art as a way of giving, being, and perceiving. Unfortunately, the big society is part of the con. 
In August, the annual election for a state started in 1983 is threatened because in our enterprise economy, the police will now have to be paid to serve. As this event is not recognised as proper public art, it receives virtually no funding, and for the volunteer Lancaster supporters to go run it, the costs will be prohibited. Or look at the Olympics. Sports will be brought to all, was the big rationalisation. But here in South Cumbria, schools cannot now afford to take kids swimming in the county where we fund rivers and lakes. The local Lloyds TSB refused a request for £250 of funding for athletics for my grandchildren's primary school. Their excuse was they had given the money to the Olympia. Now I know there's work out there for street art through that summer. But its underlying armature is more centralisation, more real estate, and more propaganda. There is another way. Let's call it vernacular art. Now, a little art here to Clark Mackey, who wrote a book recently called Random Acts of Culture, um, published by Between the Lines Press in Toronto. All those creative activities in vernacular art that people engage in daily and which give meaning to their lives. We need to reclaim these for communities in the 21st century. In reclaiming arts and community, people will create and celebrate in partnership, together with ceremonies for arts and passage, carnivals, cooking, gardening, building houses, telling stories, building dens, playing music, and making life-enhancing participatory festivals. Such work is context-dependent. You have to participate. It's playful and improvised. Economically, it depends on a gift relationship which can't be bought or sold. Think of our remarkable blood transfusion service, relying on the altruism of donors. In Britain, we give it freely. In America, it is at a price. Such art is a useful counterpoint to our doleful system of capitalist conscription, where it is time to replace the banality of economic regeneration with the rejuvenation of the soul. So that's my plea to you, young woman or young man. Go for art, but new art, a playful art that demonstrates what it is to be human, what consciousness is shifting, when consciousness is shifting to a realm of poetic resonance, a realm of visceral, sensual, aesthetic cooperation. Truly ecological poetry, where art is a mode of knowledge and a way of being. Herbert Reed said something about that in 1939. It was a way of being. This is the art we need to reclaim. At all costs, avoid being hypnotised by the established gatekeepers of culture. Beware of their demand for novelty and spectacle and media hype, where state licensed buffoons are obliged to tread the tightrope between creativity and dilettantism. If you have time to reply to my letter, young artist, you might well ask. What am I making now? Well, I rant a bit. <laughs> and sometimes it works. And I'm off in a crocodile. <laughs> I wrote years, 21 years ago, I think, a paper for the Arts Council, then called NAMS, National Arts and Media Strategy. I called it Plea for Poetry. And I asked, where is the art agenda? Where in the art agenda was street art? Circuits, fairgrounds, sign writing, mixed media art, as it was then called, and funerary furniture. I'm pleased to say that all these categories, bar one, are now in the mainstream, except for funerary furniture. I am still a pain. <laughs> for a department of applied anthropology at the Arts Council to fund ceremonies for rites of passage and to train celebrants. We need good art at the key crossroads of our lives. Child names, weddings, divorces, redundancies, and funerals, and more. Death, of course, is the fiercest, fiercest gatekeeper of all, and considering your own death is the most radical thing you can do. So I'm currently designing a biodegradable funeral urn to place cremation remains in two cells into more than bed. I'm also making films, writing stories, and poetry. Interesting how when you leave the management of this, you get more into the brains and your fingers. You can actually create what after at London House. We had a new kind of regeneration after maybe two years of bereavement. You can't stop 
and the head, the hands, and the heart together is a fantastic and creative uh, life. I'm just made an end of the musical, but the writer of Marine Critics in Morgan Bay, no crocodiles, but totally wondrous life. What would William Blake or Kenneth Patchen have created if they too had, had microscopes and iPads? In the same place of ecological awareness, we will need a new iconography to underpin our new belief structure with fresh stories, myths, and poetry. But where do we find them too? Sometimes in old places. I've been looking at Agent Orange, the toxin that Admiral Zumbos released on Vietnam in order to defoliate riverbanks, killing thousands of Vietnamese and eventually his own son. This chemical is still contaminating generations of Vietnamese children, some still unborn, and indeed it poisoned the Admiral's son and grandson, who survives with learning difficulties. Where is the story to do justice? That is the word to set hoops. As I'm coming to the end of my letter, here is some advice. First, work practically and physically. Second, Practice musical instruments and sing and dance as much as you can. Three, take holidays. Remember, in a sick society, arts workers are scapegoated and used up as safety valves for the benefit of the status quo. Read, write, and shout poetry every day. So I'll end with that. Fittingly, this is about Lansom. I must admit, it hasn't been very easy for me here tonight. It was advertised as possibly the last gig in London House. And so it's an emotional trigger. There's a lot of my family and friends' life in these walls. And I suppose I am secretly hoping that some creative organisation <laughs> might take it over. But I don't really want to get into all that politics and fundraising and building stuff again. It's a fantastic job. Whatever, this last poem is a kind of homage to the place and to the forum artists that made the dream concrete. Clearly. And that picture there was in fact sent in to the lottery people as a kind of dream concept of what it might be. And this was put in the um, we sent in an Aberdeen fish box, which had woodwork, and it was, uh, it was unloaded by security corps with trumpets at the Arts Council. <laughs> and uh, it had many flowers on the backs of which were painted these spirally water ripples. And one of the pictures in there was this poem. Interestingly, the feedback I got from one of the committee was when he came up about do they know about building, do, do they know about architecture? He said, just you don't know about this one, just let it go. And it's a belief that I always have if your ideas are good enough and your poetry is strong enough and your commitment is there, and you have imagination, then you can shift the world, really, really can. And lots of people, I was a bit rude about the Arts Council people earlier on, but in fact, we've had fantastic partnerships, and it would never have happened if there hadn't been an understanding at all levels in the way we work together. So this is clear. As a diviner senses water underground, so the builder constructs a staircase of stone, each making their own pathway between hand and work Body and spirit, time and place. So, we will construct stepping stones across diverse currents to focus for an instant on luxurious, luxuriant lichen where lime green dragonflies flits over the fading doubts of Chernobyl and Cumbria. On the edge of this poison sea, we are determined to devise a haven for dreams made concrete. A clearing of the uncertain storm, where windmills of the imagination will gain a filigree hold on the industrial daybreak of death. So the ancient beck below may flow to every room, staring and shining inside the mystic hollows of handcrafted discovery, ripple on ripple, stone on stone, forming a new pool of creation. So that's it, dear Leonatus. A new pool of creation. Certainly one that kids can swim in for free. 
or a vast ocean to swim into with courage and abandon. Sometimes you'll have to swim, swim against the current, of course, but keep swimming. Traditional strokes are useful, but make up your own strokes and be wary of old blokes telling you what to do. <laughs> Don't too wary. <laughs> Whatever. Good luck. Look after yourself and your mates. The planet needs you to leave a creative legacy for future generations. I want a us to be there in spirit. I've certainly enjoyed being around so far. Your assembly, and very sincerely, John Fox, vernacular artist, outsider poet, and honoured guest of my son.